Welcome everyone to the regular council meeting dated Tuesday, January 24th, 2023 at 4.40 p.m. in council chambers and via Zoom. We acknowledge that the town of Kirkland Lake is located on the traditional territory of Algonquin peoples, including Beaver House First Nation and unceded territory of other Indigenous peoples. We recognize the presence of the Algonquin, Anishinaabe, Ojibwe, Cree and Métis people in our community since time immemorial and honor their stewardship and care of these lands. We hereby affirm our continued commitment and responsibility to reconciliation. I'll have the call to order and a moment of silence, please. Item number two is approval of the agenda as amended, removing items 6.1 and 8.2. Madam Clerk. Moved by Councillor Lab Shaba, seconded by Councillor Casey Owens, be it resolved that the agenda for the regular meeting of council held on Tuesday, January 24, 2023, be approved as amended, removing items 6.1 and 8.2, which are being recommitted to the February 7, 2023, regular meeting of council. All in favor, Madam Clerk, please confirm. All confirmed. Item moved. Declaration of pecuniary interest. There is one, Councillor Shaba. Thank you very much, Your uh, Worship. Uh, I, Lab Shaba, am declaring direct and uh, indirect pecuniary interest on the agenda of the meeting dated Tuesday, January 24th, 2023. At the open meeting, the agenda item is 4.1. The agenda title is Status Update Chart Plain Tech Renewable Gas Production Facility Project Chart Technologies. Uh, it's uh, indirect, and the nature of my interest is as follows. My engineering firm did some engineering work for Chart Technologies, signed by me and attested by the clerk. Thank you, Councillor Chava. Do we have any further? Madam Clerk, can you confirm? Not seeing any hands up, Your Worship. Or sorry, Madam Mayor. Thank you. We will continue with the petitions and delegations. Item 4.1, status update on char, clean tech renewable gas production facility project, char, Techno char technologies incorporated. Okay, I have, uh, we'll give them a, full, a few minutes to, I think they have audio now. Hello. Hello there. Hey, good uh, afternoon. You have the, um, you have the word. Uh, the mayor just called for your uh, delegation. Um, and I've allowed you the uh, uh, ability to share your presentation with council. So go ahead. Uh, Andrew, you want to start with a quick introduction of yourself and then I can deliver the presentation here for us. Absolutely, my pleasure. And, um, you know, really appreciate the opportunity to, you know, introduce ourselves. Um, my name is Andrew White, CEO of Char Technologies. Um, you know, obviously we've been to the community uh, previously, but I think there's there's some new faces here for us, and and you know it's it's our pleasure to to take the opportunity here to to introduce ourselves. Um, Galen Cranston, who is with us tonight, or, or I guess it's still afternoon, uh, who's with us this late afternoon, is our director of stakeholder relations. Uh, perfect. Before we get into this, uh, I'm not actually in San Francisco. I've just been displaced by my home office by my one and a half year old. So uh, you'll have to deal with my digital background just for today. Um, like uh, Andrew said, thank you for having us. And uh, I'll get through this very quickly, as I'm sure some of the, the counselors have heard of us previously. And uh, for those who haven't, I'm really happy to give you an introduction. So one moment, please. Uh, it's saying that you've disabled my sharing, screen sharing. <clears throat> Okay, 
I apologize. You should be able to now. Uh, perfect. Okay, everybody can see my screen, I assume. Andrew, please confirm. Okay. All right. Um, Char Technologies, we have to include this slide as we are a publicly traded company. And as my wife is a lawyer, we have to make sure the lawyers keep getting paid. So uh, with that in mind, I will just continue. What you, will, what you can see here is uh, Andrew White shaking hands with the Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry, uh, Graydon Smith, December of 2022 at our existing facility in Thorold. Um, as Kirkland Lake uh, was presented uh, over a year ago at that time, uh, Thorold was a planned facility. Uh, now it is a reality and uh, we're very proud of everything we've accomplished so far. Uh, and it has always been the plan to replicate what we're doing in Southern Ontario in Northern Ontario, uh, as we feel there's a great opportunity for us to de develop our technology uh, in the North. And you also have access to a tremendous amount of trees that we're lacking in uh, Southern Ontario. And our business model really does revolve around um, acquiring uh, waste streams of wood. And we'll get to that on the, the next slide here. So, this is just a very simplified explanation of the technology that Andrew developed while he was at the University of Toronto and has really become a core pillar of our business. Uh, the simplest way to think about this is we take the wood that has no market whatsoever from sawmills, so your, your bark, your hog fuel, um, and in, in Southern Ontario, we also operate using uh, construction and demolition wood, which is uh, pallet wood, and uh, Toronto has a tremendous amount of that stuff kicking around. What we do with it is we put it inside the machine, uh, and it's done all without the presence of oxygen, and we externally heat the material. And when that happens, it breaks into two substances, a solid and a gas. And this all occurs without generating any emissions through the, uh, the process of separating those two products. We then are left with a solid product that we have found uh, great interest from the steel industry, the mining industry, and the agriculture industry as there's applications for all three. And the gas product, uh, we can upgrade to pipeline-ready renewable natural gas. Or if there's a market for it, we can also go to green hydrogen. But we're just waiting for the, the good folks at Ontario Energy to kind of figure out when they'll be ready for that at some point in the future. Uh, just to hammer that point home a little bit further, uh, and please confirm this with the good folks at Roscoe, um, about 80% of every tree harvested has a market. We don't want to affect that. We do not want to change. Uh, what goes to construction or, or pellets or what have you. We're talking about the bark and the rain, remaining pieces of the tree that really have no purpose and ends up either getting landfilled or burned or sitting on sawmill operator uh, property. And we can see a lot of examples of this going on currently in British Columbia. Um, and thankfully in Ontario, they're, they're trying to take some proactive steps through technology like ours to solve this problem. Uh, as I mentioned, we have deployed in Thorold already, and of course, anybody from uh, this presentation listening in, we'd be welcome, welcoming you to come see it if you're ever in the Toronto region. The system you see on the left here is our existing equipment. Uh, it's, been re it's been moved and recommissioned and installed at our new facility, uh, which lays the groundwork for uh, the government investment which will be two larger systems, about three and a half times the size of this each. Uh, I don't want that to scare anyone. Each system takes up about 9,500 square feet, uh, so it doesn't have a huge uh, footprint. And for the Kirkland Lake facility that we're discussing today, uh, it will be two of those larger systems uh, that we're looking to install. Uh, just again, our product model, we either make green hydrogen or renewable natural gas, and the renewable natural gas can just go directly into the pipeline. Uh, the demand for this across Canada and the rest of North America is quite high, uh, with the markets in Quebec and British Columbia having mandates to purchase uh, a certain percentage of renewable natural gas uh, 
in their pipeline every year. And we do expect Ontario to follow suit, uh, as we've had many discussions with both Enbridge and uh, the multiple ministries within Ontario who can confirm that this is coming. It just hasn't happened yet. Yeah, and sorry, uh, Galen, if, if we could just talk about one more, I think, key point of the of the demand is, you know, renewable natural gas is currently being produced uh, in North America. Uh, primarily, it's made from organic waste. Uh, and of course, what we're doing is looking at woody residuals as our feedstock. So it's a slightly different technology, but the end product is the same. But the key thing here is of that organic waste, renewable natural gas, the amount of production in the entirety of the United States in 2020 is enough to meet the demand of just BC and Quebec and all these other jurisdictions have mandates. So not only is the the targeting, target lending rate uh, pretty substantial, the amount of gas that's needed versus how much is produced is, is, a, is a very substantial gap. And that's kind of where the opportunity lies to use low value materials like the residuals to, to create this high value product. No problem. And thank you for that. Um, so our solid pro carbon product is again, one of the two reasons that we are of such great interest to government for funding primarily uh, to help the forest sector. Uh, two of our, our three large funders uh, specifically work towards uh, helping the forest sector uh, strengthen overall. But on the other side of that coin is the solid biocarbon product that we developed working directly with Canadian steel manufacturers. Uh, we know this is a product that they, uh, they want. They're currently consuming our bio coal in Hamilton. And as the investments from uh, the Canada and provincial governments into DeFasco and Algoma to transition to electric steel making, um, that won't completely eliminate all their need of coal. They'll still need a carbon product in order to operate uh, their steel mill. There's a chemical reaction that Andrew would be able to speak to with his chemistry background uh, a lot better than me, but uh, we can just leave it at absolutely necessary. And we're already working with them um, to be prepared when they transition fully away from coal. We'll be able to supply it uh, with products that we're going to be making in Thorold and ideally making in Kirkland Lake as well. At the other side of that, we can also um, create a biochar, uh, which can be used as a soil remediation product, which is in high demand in both the mining industry and the agriculture sector. So we really do have um, different opportunities based on what the local economics uh, actually look like. Uh, just one more quick slide about we do very much align uh, with steelmaking and, and the heavy industries in general. Uh, this is from Arcelor Mattel, uh, global parent company's climate report. If you see at the very top here, paralysis, which is our technology is included. Um, and that's, you know, predominantly based on our work uh, with them over the last few years. So uh, they've identified us as a direct pathway in order to meet their climate change needs. And uh, we're just very happy to be bringing our technology to scale. So finally, uh, Kirkland Lake, where are we talking about operating? Uh, this is Archer Drive uh, by the FedEx building and the Roscoe Sawmill. Um, the town of Kirkland Lake helped us to identify a piece of land that was adjacent, uh, which will limit the need for too many transportation trucks transporting wood uh, more than is already going to the sawmill. As, as they consume the wood, we'll be able to consume the residual waste products uh, that they generate. So with that, I would love to take any questions. Uh, and Andrew and I will do our very best to answer them for you today. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for your presentation. It's very exciting news, and thank you for your investment in Kirkland Lane. Is there any questions from council members at this time? Madam Clerk, please confirm. Uh, Councillor Kylie, Madam Mayor. Yeah, I'm just wondering uh, when shovels will be in the ground. 
Great, uh, great question. And, and certainly uh, there was a, a little bit of activity um, before winter last year. We, we had some initial indications that a specific government funding program would be approved early winter last year. And that funding was earmarked to do the final development work. So we wanted to make sure we were ready to do the design work. So we sent our team up to the, the initial geotech testing and then that funding um you know has been delayed uh by about a year uh, but we're we're pretty confident it's going to be uh, available to us in the very near future um if it comes through under the current timelines uh we may be starting to do some initial work over the summer um sort of depends on when that 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 financing closes but our our goal would be to, to do the you know challenging stuff that's harder to do in winter uh, in the summer if we can if we can get there. So the, the timeline right now is tight to get the design done in time, but there's still a bit of a window um, to get that working. So soon, um, but it'll just kind of depend on finalizing a couple uh, programs here. Thank you. I will add that was through uh, no fault of Char. That was uh, a result of uh, Minister O'Regan uh, taking over and then and being you know lateral shift and, and Minister Wilkinson coming on board. Uh, all programs uh, got paused for a good period of time there. So. Yeah. Thank you. Any further questions? Madam Clerk, you'll have to confirm for me. No, uh, Madam Mayor, there are no other questions. Would you like me to read the recommendation? Yes, please. Okay, moved by Councillor Pat Kiley, seconded by Councillor Rick Owen. The result that the delegation from Char Technologies, Talk Technologies Inc., providing a status update on the Char Clean Tech Renewable uh, Gas Production Facility Project be received for information. All in favor? Madam Clerk, please confirm. Confirmed. Item carried. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much for the time and look forward to seeing you all uh, real soon uh, when we make it our next trip up there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye now. Bye. Okay. Um, at this time, I am going to uh, relinquish the chair to Councillor Lad Shaba as acting mayor for the remainder of this meeting due to the fact that I am traveling uh, from Toronto back home. So uh, we just want to avoid any technical difficulties. So thank you, Councillor Shaba, for taking over the chair at this time. You're welcome and uh, safe travels. Uh, we are at acceptance of minutes. Number five. Yeah, item number five, acceptance of minutes and recommendation. Moved by Councillor Dolly Dykin, seconded by Councillor Casey Owens, be it resolved that Council approve the minutes of the following meeting. Minutes of the regular meeting of Council held December 20th, 2022. All in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. Item number six, six one. That one's been removed. Oh, yeah, that's fair. Removed. And 6 2, item number 6 2. Can you read the other one? Uh, a word of contract request for proposal RFP 590 22, land use planning consultancy services. Wilfred Haas, Director of Economic Development. There it is. Thank you for you, your worship. Uh, the municipality released an RFP late last fall to find um, a consultant that could help us on planning issues and planning matters. As you're aware, we do not have an interested planner working for the municipality. The idea was that we would be uh, securing the, the, the services on an as-needed basis in order to accomplish uh, a variety of different tasks. The tasks themselves were divided into two categories. One would be services as needed. So one of the things we want to do is go through our policies, procedures, et cetera, and have them updated and uh, be more reflective of um, the, the kind of challenges that we're facing now and in the future. 
on a project basis, there would be other uh, items that we would be bringing forward to the consultants for some guidance. That could include finding a, a spot for a new industrial park, residential development, up, uh, updating some key documentation, such as the official plan. We had two responses to the RFP. Um, they were uh, assessed and the recommendation is to go with JL Richards. We found that uh, they were, well, they have a, a presence here in Northern Ontario. They have a diverse work group that we can tap uh, at different rates that would be more suitable to us. And they certainly demonstrated a willingness to work with us to uh, assess what a project or an assignment would cost, how we could save some money on doing um, that work and how we want to move it forward. So we've been very comfortable in the conversations that we've had with them to date and we have already uh, indicated, you know, areas that we would be looking at. There does not seem to be any challenges in them meeting those requirements. But we're asking for that to be passed. Okay. We need a recommendation as for so you can ask questions. Okay. Any questions from uh, council members? Yes. It's, uh, it's not really a question, more a comment. Um, I know in the past, uh, especially the first time I ran for election, uh, it was brought up to me that we had a full-time planner and most communities our size do not have full-time planners. In fact, we were one of only two or three municipalities. Um, so I'm very pleased to see that we are going back to a consulting basis, um, which will reduce our costs and, and bring us back in line with, with other similar communities. I'm also, uh, I have great confidence in, in the company that's being recommended. Um, they've done a lot of work for the town over the history that I've been here, and I've never heard any complaints from council or staff about the quality or timing or the price of the work. So I'm fully in favor of this. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions? Madam Clerk, we will need the recommendation. Right, May, uh, moved by Councillor Rick Owens, seconded by Councillor Casey Owens. Did resolve that report number 2022 DEV 001 entitled Award of Contract Request for Proposal Land Use Planning Consultancy Services RFP 59022 be received, and that Council hereby award a contract to JL Richards and Associates Limited as per the terms set out in RFP 59022 Land Use Planning Consultancy Services and that the Mayor Municipal Clerk be authorized to execute an agreement for land use planning consultancy services between the Corporation of the Town of Kirkland Lake and JL Richards and Associates Limited at the satisfaction of the Chief Administrative Officer and Director of Economic Development. And finally, that an execution bylaw authorizing the execution of a contract agreement and any related subcontracts and subsequent amendments proposed in favor of the municipality without detrimental financial impacts be brought forward for three readings on January 24th, 2023. Thank you very much. Thank you, call for the Yeah, you show our hands for all in favor. Well, then I'll ask the mayor to turn on her. Good evening. Okay. <clears throat> Anyone against? Okay, motion was carried. One moment, I'm just asking for the okay. Madam Mayor. Has, do you have your hand up for the yes. vote for? Okay, yes. Can you call for? Can you let me know? The yeah, motion, yes, carry. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right. Okay, we'll move on to item number six point three. 2022 post municipal and school board elections debriefing. Uh, Jennifer Montreal, Municipal Clerk. Uh, good evening, Chair, Madam Mayor, and members of Council. Uh, as the report was well detailed, I'll keep my summary brief. Uh, the 2022 municipal and school board elections were a success insofar that the town actively communicated at various times and through several mediums. Uh, per, uh, pertinent electoral information to its electors. Uh, the returning officer hosted a number of advanced and election day polls on method of paper ballots and vote tabulation equipment and offered proxy voting while ensuring that all procedural aspects were in place and in keeping with the Municipal Elections Act and other acts and regulation. Although voter turnout in Kirkland Lake was below the provincial average, being 2803 uh, vis-a-vis 3603, it's been formally reported that this was felt throughout Ontario as many municipalities also experienced a decline compared to the 2018 events. In 2026, electors will be identified on a preliminary list of electors provided by Elections Ontario and no longer the Municipal Property Assessment Corporation. However, MPAC would continue to provide the PLE if any by-elections are called in 2023. 
early work, including municipal representation, has commenced in 2023 in the hopes of a smooth transition of the voters list responsibilities between MPAC and Elections Ontario. Given the various challenging challenges in this year's and elections past, the election signed bylaw will require reform and it is being requested that a new bylaw be presented to Council and a public meeting take place prior to March 31st, 2023. A survey was conducted during the polls from participating electors on the preferred method of vote for the 2026 event, generating a mixed desire between internet telephone and the traditional method. A fulsome research period is required on the implementation of alternative voting methods, including time to effect change to certain corporate policies and to conduct a fulsome inventory of, uh, um, of and the opportunities for information integration with our current systems. The 2022 municipal and school board elections cost approximately $36,000. Administration is seeking to the recommitment of any unused portions of the election were reserved towards the 2026 event. Administration is also seeking to receive approval to create a compliance audit reserve fund to allow unused operating budget dollars to be committed for future compliance audit activities and audit fees, which are legislative required legislatively required should a compliance audit be engaged. That is the summary of my report, Mr. Chair. Okay, any questions? Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> well, congratulations on getting this report to us. Uh, we haven't seen this in any one of my terms of, uh, of council and uh, nice to see that the voters list finally got brought up to date. Uh, a lot of Good information uh, from from your report. So, uh, job well done. Yeah, kind of all Yeah, I just have uh, one question from Madam Clerk, and I I think it was just uh, on how it was read. when you said the operating budget. If there was surplus of people, you're referring specifically to the election account, right? Through you, Mr. Chair, to all of Council. So, uh, and directed to Councillor Owen. Um, when I'm talking about the recommitment of the funds, what happened was that the reserves were pulled from, from the reserve fund to the operating budget. So, any of the unused portion of that operating in the operating budget right now that were earmarked for elections would be recommitted to the election reserve. Okay, yes. I just want a clarification on that because I, I didn't want to commit all the operating surplus if there was one. Well, that that is the no, no. that's simply earmarked yeah. for elections. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, Castle. In the yeah. report, it's a well detailed report comes with a lot of stuff. You mentioned that services for the clerk's office are by appointment only. At that time, has it gone? Is it still by appointment only, or can someone walk in and get services from the clerk department without an appointment? Through you, Mr. Chair, to all of council and to through to council Owens. So now that I have a complement of staff uh, in the clerk's office, I'm able to reduce the restrictions on that by appointment only. So our marriage licensing has reverted back to uh, uh, the availability of staff. Uh, ad hoc um, commissionings have been occurring. Um, we do, because of uh, COVID and because of the availability of staff, uh, we have been promoting by appointment, but it doesn't preclude us from being able to help somebody um, on an on, on a live basis moving forward. Yeah. Good. Thanks. Any other questions? Just looking to see if the, the mayor has a question. No, nope. she doesn't see that. Okay. Um, Madam Clerk, can you read the recommendation, please? I may. Um, moved by Councillor Casey Owen, seconded by Councillor Rick Owen, be it resolved that report number 2023 CLK 001, entitled 2022 Post Municipal and School Board Elections Debrief, be received for information, and that any unutilized portion of the funds that were transferred from the election reserve to the election section of the 2022 administrative operating budget be recommitted to the town's election reserve for the 2026 municipal and school board elections, and that a compliance audit reserve fund be established to set aside money for that specific specified purpose, and that the municipal clerk bring forward a report in quarter one of 2023, um, presenting a proposed election sign by law that excludes cost prohibitive sign limitations, clearer definitions, time, 
timing of sign placement parallel with regulations um, and legislation, including authority to enforce offenses, penalties, and orders permissible under the Provincial Offenses Act, and that a public meeting be scheduled at the call of the mayor in quarter one of 2023 to allow the public to provide comments surrounding the said proposed election signed by law. And finally, that the municipal clerk bring forward a report in quarter one of 2025, including remedial proposals surrounding the challenges outlined in the report and to provide education and recommendations on the preferred method of vote for the 2026 Thank municipal and school board elections. Thank you very much. Uh, all in favor? Anyone opposed? None. Motion is carried. Okay. Uh, on, moving on to item number 6.4, uh, 2022 post election accessibility report. Madam Clerk. Uh, through you, Chair, to all of Council, the Municipal Elections Act identifies that the clerk is to prepare a report within 90 days after voting in a regular election about the identification, removal, prevention of barriers that affect electors and candidates with disabilities. This report was published on our website since January 17, 2023. The returning officer had prepared a pre-election plan in April 2022, identifying the proposed alternative, alternative and election day voting locations, including long-term care and retirement facilities. Site audit inspections were conducted, ensuring that facilities were largely barrier-free and where barriers, barriers did exist, an alternative barrier-free solution was identified for voters. Visual diagrams of the polling locations were then published in September 22 prior to advanced voting. Election, election staff were diligent in providing any person with limited abilities with any prepared documents and information in a different format that was published upon request. Personal assistive devices were welcomed at each voting location. All voting locations were pet friendly. Pro uh, proxy voting and shut-ins uh, shut program was included and developed during the voting periods associated with the 2022 municipal and school board elections. Auto mark ballots, uh, marking technology, and an election aid were provided on election day, offering all electors the opportunity to vote independently by touchscreen, braille ballot, or audio tactile keypad. Voting locations were equipped with tools and resources such as magnifying tools and election assistance. All election staff underwent accessibility training and participated in a mandatory training session, which highlighted best practices and real life scenarios on how to assist voters with a variety of limitations in their abilities. The town encouraged feedback from the public and returning officer received very minimal feedback. Uh, certain notes from electors requiring aid was that electronic voting uh, could fa facilitate ease of voting for a person with mobility impairment. Uh, the returning officer is committing uh, is committed to investing different uh, investigating in different ballot styles. So rather than the bubble beside the count, the candidate marking or a dabber style selection in the 2026 uh, event. All comments received regarding the improving or delivering uh, the election or a service related to the election will be taken into consideration during the planning and implementation stages of the 2026 event. An administration note that the town met the goal of ensuring that electors within the municipality who required accessible uh, services were provided the best opportunities to vote as independently as possible in the 2022 event. That is the summary of my report, Chair. I'm available for questions. Thank you very much. Are there any questions or comments? Okay, seeing none. Can you read the recommendation? I will. Moved by Councillor Pat Kiley, seconded by Councillor Rick Owen. Be it resolved that report number 2023 CLK 002 entitled 2022 Post Election Accessibility Report be received for information. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Uh, motion is carried. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Item number 6.5, request for parade permit. Lions International Kirkland Lake Branch, Convention Parade. Thank you. Through you, Chair, to all of Council. Very, I'm going to try to make this brief. The Kirkland Lake Branch of the Lions Club is requesting permission to host a parade on Saturday, April 29th, 2023, commencing at 9 a.m. in conjunction with their District A5 convention being held at Northern College in Kirkland Lake. The suggested parade path, which starts on Main Street, traveling along Government Road to Burnside Drive and ending October Mine, was intentionally requested in order to bring awareness on the pathways, uh, the pathway entitled Mile of Gold and fit with the convention's theme in revisiting historic Kirkland Lake. In terms of agency comments and concerns, the Ontario Provincial Police uh, Kirkland Lake Detachment 
uh, identified and uh, requested that the organizers contact the OPP detachment the week before the parade to organize a couple escort vehicles dependent on calls for service. Uh, the members may be pulled away if a priority call for service comes in. The town's public work department provided the following comments that there was no issue at all for the westbound traffic with the proposed path. However, it should be noted that between Main Street to Kirkland Street, the eastbound traffic needs to be stopped completely for the duration of time it will take the parade to travel through this section. Once the parade passes Kirkland Street, the eastbound traffic will be open and we'll be able to take the green line detour. So there was a there was a um, an, a note in um, between the director and myself showing a, a three different pathways. So if anybody wants to see the pathways, I will upload the, uh, the schematic of the option to the agenda after the meeting. And then the other issue was between Dunfield to Burnside. The eastbound traffic needs to be stopped completely at the corner of Government Road and Dunfield for the duration of time that it would take the parade to travel through this section. So once the parade ends October, all the detours can be dismantled and restore traffic to Government Road. Um, as such, the Public Work Department is going to engage the services of a one traffic control person to manage the closures at, at those two uh, noted above uh, intersections. Uh, the Fire and Emergency Services Department provided no objections with the request. Uh, in terms of road closure notices, historically parade volunteers coordinate road closure requests directly with our Public Works Department, who will be responsible for providing road closure notices to Kirkland Lake residents on the town's social media platforms. Uh, due to the trajectory of this parade, the following have been consulted or will be notified of potential break in regular service during the parade. So the Ministry of Transportation, who noted not having any jurisdiction or control of any connecting link, however, they wish that um, to where there would be a disruption in traffic on the highway to be kept apprised to keep people informed and assisting in addressing any issues with overweight or oversized permits dri uh, driving through Kirkland uh, Lake. And the requesting organization have intended to offer cadet volunteers to assist the various agencies in the road closes and through the parade process where required. Uh, it should also be noted that going forward, any parades that will cause disruptions to the traffic on Highway 66, that administration will seek to inform and to seek comments from the Traffic Operations Centre in Sudbury. And it has noted in the report, historically, no fees have been collected from any requesting organizations for parade permits, as such councils being presented with the recommendation to formally waive the requirement as outlined in bylaw 8665. And I confirm that the Lions Club has committed in providing the town with a certificate of insurance for the event. And further to my note in the report, the Lions Club has communicated with the Tilburn Operating Authority as they are hosting other scheduled convention related events at this site. Um, the Lions Club will also be seeking a flag raising on the Friday prior to the parade, a letter of greetings from the mayor's office welcoming attendees to the convention in Kirkland Lake, etc. Administration foresees no issue with council approving a parade permit for this type of historical community event. Uh, as allowing the parade to materialize will promote positive community partnerships, uh, which is in line with council's strategic objective and prior send the bill for questions if council wish to post them. Thank you very much. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, I'd just like to congratulate Bob Beaven and the, the Lions Club for undertaking this. Uh, it's a huge challenge. I understand there's about 250 people, Bob. Uh, we hope for 200. For 200. Yeah. Uh, that's a, a big undertaking for restart on the club. Uh, and uh, we're quite proud of the fact that uh, Kirk Lake uh, is going to be the sponsoring uh, community. So uh, please pass that on to uh, members of the Lions Club. I will. Any questions or comments? Yes. No. Yes, many, many, many years ago, I covered a convention that was held by the Lions Club at Norman College. And trust me, it will be, there will be money spent in this community. Um, the Lions seem to enjoy spending money, <laughs> but it will definitely be, there'll be a positive and, and uh, a, a rather major uh economic and positive impact by holding that convention here. So I, I think it's great news. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Okay. Seeing none, do you have any? Moved by Councillor Casey Owen, seconded by Councillor Rick Owen.
be a result at report number 2023 CLK 003 entitled Request for Parade Permit Lines International Curtain Lake District Branch Convention Parade be received and the council direct that a parade permit be issued to the Lions Club International District A5 Kirkland Lake for April 29th, 2023. And finally, that council hereby waive the $100 permit fee requirement as outlined in bylaw 8665. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Say none. We'll just get it. Item number seven. There are none. Item number eight. Introduction of a consideration of bylaws. Moved by Councillor Pat Kiley, seconded by Councillor Casey Owens. Uh, be it resolved that the following bylaw be ready first, second, and third time numbered pass signed by the mayor and clerk, and the seal of the corporation be affixed thereto. Bylaw number 23001 being a bylaw to provide for interim tax levy and to provide for the payment of taxes and to provide for penalty and interest. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Seeing none, we'll just carry it. And next bylaw item number 843. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Rick Owen, seconded by Councillor Casey Owen. Be it resolved that the following bylaw be ready first, second, and third time numbered pass signed by the mayor and clerk and the seal of the corporation be affixed thereto. Bylaw number 23003 being a bylaw authorizing the mayor and municipal clerk to execute a service agreement with JL Richards and Associates Limited for land use planning consultancy services. Sorry. All in favor? Is okay. ready to vote? Oh, yes. <laughs> All in favor? Vote. Anyone opposed? Say no. Scary. Okay. Item 8.4. Moved by Councillor Casey Owen, seconded by Councillor Rick Owen. Be it resolved that the following bylaw be ready first, second, and third time. Number passed signed by the mayor and clerk and the seal of the corporation be affixed there too. Well, before I read uh, that section, I did have a note for council. So this bylaw is being presented to you for amendment as the Bereavement Authority of Ontario. So they're called the BAO. They set the annual rates for cemetery operators to charge for activity, which includes uh, each internment scattering of cremation. The fee has increased from $12 per activity to $13.63 per activity, which 100% of which is paid to the BAO annually. And this is the only fee that is being proposed for amendment at this time, uh, as it's an annual requirement. Uh, so I'll continue with the, the, the I'll reread the uh, recommendation. Moved by Councillor Casey Owen, seconded by Councillor Rick Owen. Be it resolved that the following bylaw be read at first, second, and third time, numbered pass, signed by the mayor and clerk, and the seal of the corporation be affixed thereto. Bylaw number 23004 being a bylaw to amend bylaw 21111 to establish fees for the Kirkland Lake Cemetery. Thank you. Call in favor. Anyone opposed? Stand. Scary. Thank you. Questions from council to staff? There were none. none. Item number 10, notices of motion. Yes. Uh, I have a notice of motion I'd like to bring forward uh, with regards to the uh, correspondence we received on the Ukraine uh, request for uh, donations uh, for towards uh, reestablishing, uh, I guess, equipment and, and whatnot uh, to provide electricity in, in the area. Okay. Okay. Noted. Noted. Any more notices? Okay. That is that. Uh, item number 11, Councilor's report. So if you want to start. No. Yeah, oh, okay. Yes, Councilor Owen. Yes, thank you. Uh, Acting Chair, um, Councillor Kylie and, and myself attended the uh, Temiskaming DSA meeting. Um, it's uh, it was basically an introductory meeting, uh, giving overviews of uh, the various programs that they run through the district. Um, I found to be very informative as this was my first meeting with them. Um, one interesting project that they have in Kirkland Lake that I, I uh, learned quite a bit about is a um, transitional housing project. They have, uh, I think it's 10 units, is it now? Uh, four or eight units? Uh, I think it's more like eight. Yeah, I think it's four in each yeah. residence. Uh, the interesting thing about this is that they've partnered with the Salvation Army on this project. So they've taken uh, 
what I call semi-detached hosts that they already that DC have already owned um, and did the conversions that they needed. And the Salvation Army, the Kirkland Lake Salvation Army, is providing the services to help people to transition from uh, unstable housing situations um, to uh, it reintegrating into a stable housing situation. And uh, I, I, I think that's quite unique and, and probably the way uh, that a lot of us should be looking at partnership with outside agencies uh, and sharing the costs and, and responsibilities. So um, that, that was, I found very interesting. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, if I may add, uh, Rick, uh, they did some preliminary draft budgeting uh, on, on different uh, departments. Uh, it was only a portion of it. Uh, what we did see was look fairly fav favorable towards the municipality, but uh, uh, we will, on February 1st, go back to uh, the rest of the budgeting aspect, the draft budget. Okay, thank you very much. Motion for that. Okay. So at 11.2, you can identify if there's anybody else that wants to speak. Yeah, anybody else wants to uh, speak? So, yeah, I would be 11.2 now. Okay, 11.2. You're white, right. proclamation. Bells, let's talk day mental health awareness, January 25th, 2023. So, yours. Can you still hear us? Yep, thank you, Acting Mayor Shaba. Whereas January 25th, 2023, marks the 13th annual Bell Let's Talk Day, a day to take action and create positive change for mental health. And whereas the town of Kirkland Lake supports positive mental health for all citizens and members of our community and seeks to improve the lives of the citizens who will experience mental illness or mental health issues in their lifetime. And whereas the town of Kirkland Lake recognizes that now is the time to come together to take action and to show support for mental health in meaningful and impactful ways to help ensure all Canadians can access and mental health and addiction supports they need to flourish. And whereas the town of Kirkland Lake raises a flag to celebrate Bell's Let's Talk Day and encourage all citizens of Kirkland Lake to join the conversation, take action, keep listening, keep talking, keep being there and to create positive change. Therefore, be it resolved, I, Stacey White, do hereby proclaim Wednesday, January 25th, 2023, as Bell's Let's Talk in Italy and encourage the support of this campaign. Thank you very much. So the mayor will be uh, hosting the flag raising with Bell representatives and CMHA tomorrow at 1 p.m. Okay. at Town Hall. All right. Um, item 11.4. Oh, so 1.3, uh, Mayor, uh, 2023 Roadmap Annual Conference and Delegations Update. Yes, so we had um, requested six delegation and were successful at getting four. Um, sorry, <clears throat> I'm in the dark in the car, so let me just flip over here. Okay, so we did delegate. Uh, to the Honorable Greg Rickford, Minister of Northern Development, regarding industrial land. At this time, OSIP funding has closed. However, the Minister encouraged us to continue to apply to grants and to investigate provincial funds. Yeah, we're going to lose you. I think, well, we, might, I think we're gonna, we might lose you, Madam yeah. Mayor. I can't hear you, Jen. I think we might lose you. Oh, and I think and we, we have lost her. Right <laughs> oh, oh, there she is. How about now?
No. 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 Okay, no. perhaps to look at this. No. Would you would you like to bring the report for Roma on February seventh? Yeah. That's what I'm yeah. Sure. All right. Um, do, can you yeah. do that And would you like to do your monthly review for January as well at that meeting? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, the items eleven point three and eleven point four will be dealt, uh, deferred to February seventh. Okay. So you mean recommendations for the uh, yeah. Uh, Yes, I will okay. read that. All right. Uh, moved by Councillor Pat Kiley, seconded by Councillor Rick Owen. Be it resolved that the verbal updates from members of council be received. Okay. All in favor? Motion is carried. Okay. okay. Uh, item number 12, additional information. None. Okay. And of course, this is the end of the full session. There is no full session. Okay. And there's no matter from There's no course. matter from oh, there's no okay. All right, well, we're doing well today. Uh, <laughs> we'll be going for supper. <laughs> okay, item number 15. Uh, moved by Councillor Pat Kiley, seconded by Councillor Casey Owens. Be it resolved that the following bylaw be read a first, second, and third time numbered pass signed by the mayor and clerk and the seal of the corporation be affixed there too. Bylaw number 23005. Being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of council at its meeting held on Tuesday, January 24, 2023. Okay, all in favor? Okay, motion is carried. Okay. Item number 16. The adjournment moved by okay. Councillor Casey Owens, seconded by Councillor Pat Kiley. Be resolved that this regular uh, meeting of council do now adjourn at 5 31 p.m. Okay. All in favor? Anyone opposed to that? Okay. <laughs> Motion is carried. Thank you very much. Good night, everyone.